Hi, foodie friends, and welcome to Chef's Recipe Spotlight with Jessica Ann, where we love to do what we do best, and that's talk about all things food. So today we are excited to share our culinary creation of today. The day. It's a delectable dish, at least in my eyes. And it's something that is very near and dear to my heart. And that is Maryland style crab cakes. I say Maryland style because Maryland has a very unique style of crab cake. Locals will tell you that you never put any bell pepper, celery, carrot, onion, or garlic in a good crab cake. Some would even say parsley's a no no, no green. No, that doesn't mean that you can't put those in crab cakes. They're just not Maryland style. That's a good Louisiana or North Carolina style. It's just not Maryland. And a good Maryland crab cake has no filler. Now, no filler means not anything but just crab. It just means that there's the least amount of binder possible to hold the crab cake together. As in, if I were to touch it with my fork, it would probably start falling apart from jumbo lump blue crab meat. So I have a really good recipe for this. It does use jumbo lump crab meat. I really highly recommend using that. The The meat from the claw or the back fin is, is good. And back fin would be my second, my second, um, choice, but the claw meat is a little bit stringier, doesn't have the same texture and flavor and won't hold together as well because there is so little binder in this one. So you're going to need about two pounds of jumbo lump blue crab meat, blue crab, not snow crab, not king crab, blue crab meat. This is going to be expensive foodie friends. There's no other way around it. It is a crab cake. This is a special occasion kind of meal and you're going to drop some dough. Okay, fourth cup of a good mayonnaise. I like an olive oil based mayonnaise. Mayonnaise is made with eggs, so this makes it a little bit creamy, but is also part of the binder. My recipe uses one teaspoon of Worcestershire sauce. This really bumps up the headiness in your crab cake, brings out some natural flavors. One teaspoon of Dijon mustard, two teaspoons of Old Bay seasoning. So Old Bay is now owned by McCormick. So it is distributed throughout the U.S., probably worldwide as a seafood seasoning. But at one point in time, Old Bay was just a Maryland staple. It was only available here. It was a tiny little company and then eventually got bought out by McCormick. So there are some other ones, J.O., a couple of other different types of seafood seasoning you can use if you want to. But Old Bay is really what makes this a Maryland crab cake. Okay, we need fresh lemon juice, always fresh lemons. Anything in a bottle is a concentrate, doesn't have the same zestiness as, as, as fresh lemon. And one cup panko breadcrumbs. This is another point of discussion for locals. Some people like to use saltines. Other people use regular Italian style breadcrumbs. I like panko. I think they hold together the best and give the best texture. And then one large egg. Make sure you lightly beat that ahead of time. So draw, dab your crab meat with paper towels, just kind of lay them out on a plate with paper towels just to get all the moisture out. If there's a water on them when they're packed, it, it prohibits the binder from doing its job and binding, but you really want to do this gently. Try not to break up any of the large crab meat lumps. Those are really what people are going for. In a separate medium bowl, whisk together the mayonnaise, Worcestershire sauce, Dijon mustard, Old Bay, and lemon juice. You want to get that in a nice creamy concoction, right? And then add the crab meat, panko, and lightly beaten egg. These you just want to toss. And when I say toss gently, I mean, I use my fingers. I don't even use a whisk. I don't use a spoon. I don't use a spatula. I use my fingers. The point here is that I don't want to break up any of the crab lumps. If it isn't sticking together, if you can't kind of ball it in your hand, add a little bit more panko, like a tablespoon or two. You should be able to form eight jumbo crab cakes or six crab balls. That's a lot. I know you can freeze them. You can also half this recipe if you want to just half it and do four crab cakes and one pound of jumbo lump crab meat. Um, but they're really good. And my family eats two each. So eight actually is a serving size for just four. Okay. Line a rimmed baking sheet with aluminum foil or parchment. You can lightly grease that if you want to, but you don't have to. And place those crab cakes on there. I like to put mine into the fridge and let them kind of congeal a little bit for a few minutes. This isn't necessary, but it's highly recommended. Okay. So when you are ready to eat, 
put them, uh, put the broiler on high heat and place it about the uh, rack about four to five inches away from the heating element. You might know your broiler better than me. Mine is about four to five inches away. Some people need to be super close to get theirs to broil properly, but you really just want them to be lightly browned on top, which is going to be about seven to eight minutes. Nearly everything in there is cooked already. And let's be honest, the egg is probably pasteurized, so it's pretty safe to eat even if it was raw. It's really just getting that crab cake heated all the way through and brown on the top. Remove it with a fish spatula, transfer it to a serving plate, and then decide what you want to serve it with. I like to sprinkle mine with more Old Bay and a couple of different dipping sauces. Of course, tartar sauce. I do like cocktail sauce, even though most Marylanders would be like, what? Um, an aioli is always a good idea. We've got some lemon and fresh herb aiolis. But most of the time, I just go for fresh lemon. The crab meat has enough glorious flavor as it is. So it really doesn't need much else to help it along. Anyway, there you go. That's what Marilyn does. Football and crab cakes. As always, we hope to give you some culinary inspiration and love to hear your thoughts, comments, experiences, tips, and tricks. Leave them in the comment section and make sure you subscribe to our podcast wherever you listen, as well as newsletter. You'll get all of our new stuff, YouTube videos, recipes, all those good things. From my kitchen to yours, have a great day.